This is how to create a $20 home studio and shoot it with any camera. A camera that I know you all have because this shot was taken with a phone. My name is Pai and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? My name is Pai and welcome to Adorama TV. It is wonderful being back here. Now look, on my TikTok at Born Uncreative, I recently posted these two images. And I said, one of these images was captured with a $4,000 professional camera and lens setup. The other one was shot with a phone. Can you guess which is which? Now I know a lot of you have probably seen concepts like this, but to be honest, consumers that are just jumping into photography, most of us haven't. And when we see two images like this, we think that the nicer photograph, which is the one shot with the phone was actually the professional setup. This is exactly what happened and most people responded that they thought the iPhone photo was the professional shot, when in reality, well, it was just shot in good light. Of course, this was an intentional exercise to demonstrate the fact that a great camera using bad light doesn't yield good results. So in this video, we're gonna walk through this entire setup and I'm gonna take you through the post side as well. I shot it and edited it on the phone, which I'm gonna show you, but you guys can use any gear you'd like. The point is the lighting. So what you're seeing is Jay sitting on a chair. And this is the first shot that I took, which was just with the room lights on. Jay is sitting directly in front of this window. So here is our window light, okay? The curtains are wide open. We have a wall behind him. Jay is sitting about right here on a little chair and my camera angle is right here. The first step is nix all the ambient light in the room. Primarily what we're looking at is I don't want this mixed lighting look where we have this kind of fluorescent slash tungsten light coming from our LEDs mixed with daylight coming through the window. So turn off the ambient light in the room, kill all of it. Next, what I'm gonna do is actually begin to close down your curtains. So all you need is a place in your home where you have curtains. You're gonna place your subject next to the window and then close down the curtains so that way you can basically create a strip box with just your curtains. Ideally, you also want that window that has shears like we have here. But if you don't have that, then just grab a white bed sheet and hang it up over the window as you close down the curtains. It'll work totally fine. It'll completely diffuse everything. So with that now, what we've done is I've placed him a little bit forward. So I moved Jay a little bit forward and I narrowed down the curtains. So I pulled the curtains in to this little strip like this. So now we have a strip box with our curtains and what happens is no matter what color the wall is in your home, it's gonna get darker because you've closed off the light. So you're gonna get a nice rich tone from that wall. If the wall is kind of a taupe, a slight brown or a white, it gets you this really nice kind of lively brown tone or if it's white, it goes to a nice dark gray. It'll look fantastic just as it is. But watch. If you have a backdrop, it can be anything. It could be a black cloth, it could be a piece of fabric, it could be a studio backdrop. I have a backdrop that I got online from Ethan Alex. He does really nice hand-painted backdrops that are very affordable. And all I did was I brought it right behind my subject and placed that backdrop behind him. And again, you're just gonna find something to clamp it to. And in the studio, I'm just using a C-stand again. But what I noticed now was that the shadow on the kind of shadow side of his face was a little bit too dark, a little bit too deep. So here's what I want you to do. Bring in a reflector, okay? And you're gonna place that reflector right on the other side to bounce light in. We're in the studio here, so I'm grabbing a C-stand and using an A-clamp to clamp the reflector onto it. But I get it, you're not gonna have a C-stand at home. So just grab a chair, grab a chair, put your reflector on it. I had someone on TikTok actually say, yeah, but I don't wanna buy a $20 reflector. I'm like, okay use a poster board. You can see here, you can also use a poster board. Okay, so reflector or just a white piece of poster board, that'll set you back a dollar. You got, you're, you're gonna be fine. Just go grab a poster board. You got a dollar, it'll be fine. So now we get this nice fill light. Now, depending on where it's positioned, we can kind of create more of an edge light. So if you wanna create an edge light on your subject, you're gonna position it a little bit further back. If you wanna fill all the shadow, you position it a little bit further forward where you place it is gonna control the type of light that you are gonna have. 
Now, as a bonus tip here, you can take the shot as is, and if you compare this shot to our starting image, it already looks so much better. And this was shot with a phone, so feel free to shoot it with anything you got. Because most anybody looking at this would think this was a studio shot on a professional setup, when in reality, it's just a $20 reflector, a backdrop, and your phone. Granted, I'm not telling you that phones replace dedicated cameras. At least not yet. Eventually, that might be the case. What I'm trying to say, though, is that lighting and your creative tools and your understanding, it trumps everything. Now let's take this image to post because I do want to show you how to edit it. So here's the final image from the phone and what I'll do is I'll give you guys this exercise file as well. So if you click the link in the description of this video, you can actually download this exercise file and work along with me in either Lightroom or what we're doing here is just Lightroom Mobile. I want you to see how quick and easy it is to create professional images right there on your mobile device. So what I'm gonna do is go to presets and I'm gonna begin with a preset. Now I have Visual Flow presets, which the desktop versions include your mobile installation as well. Now the benefit of this is we get not only a look, but then we get that look adapted over to the different lighting conditions. Don't worry, I'll show you guys the settings and I'll explain as we go, but I'm gonna choose a look from the modern pack. And so in the modern pack, I'm gonna choose soft light because we intentionally shot this image in soft light, right? So I'm gonna select soft light. It automatically applies its tone settings and everything, and it looks really nice already. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and press the check mark, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna start working through kind of all the different settings. So for light, here's a really simple trick. Watch this. I'm gonna actually, and, and make sure that your brightness, by the way, is up when you're editing, just so you can see the image kind of at full brightness. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna bring the exposure down. Notice how we have this nice highlight on our subject, right? I refer to this as dark mode editing. And what you do is you essentially pull the exposure down and you use highlights to control the brightness of your subject, right? So I'm gonna bring the highlights up, actually. I'm also gonna reduce contrast a little bit. I'm gonna bring the shadows up a little bit and I'm gonna bring the white point up a little bit. So what we're doing is using highlights and whites to control the exposure of the skin to get us this nice and rich tone. I'm also gonna bring the blacks up a little bit. Now from here, I'm gonna go to selective. So if I go to selective, press this plus button, and then go to the radial gradient, I can pull a gradient directly out from my subject right here. You notice the red area is what's being affected. So what I'm gonna do is invert it. So now everything outside of that red area is what's gonna be affected. I'm gonna press down and swipe up to bring the feather up to 100%. So now it kind of pulls into our subject. Going to light, I'm gonna reduce the exposure. Okay, so I'm pulling the exposure down significantly around my subject, and I might even do one more. So I'm gonna press plus, go to uh, this time a graduated filter, pull this down from the top, and go back up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go to light again, and I'm gonna pull the exposure down up at the top, okay? So again, this kind of evens everything out, and it creates this natural and subtle vignette that pulls into our subject as the background gets dark. Now from here, all I'm gonna do is go into my color settings, this is where I can show you a bit more about what the uh, preset is doing. Let's actually go, this is selective right now, let's go back out of there, and now let's go to color. So if you look at the color mix, what the modern look is kind of doing is sort of applying a different set of adjustments to each of these different colors. We're adjusting hue, and if at any point, if you wanna dial these things in, you can just pause and dial each one of them in. But we're adjusting the hue saturation of the reds, we're doing hue saturation and luminance of the oranges. This is really for skin tone. We wanna to preserve skin tone and even brighten a little bit. Same thing when the yellows, we're gonna add a little bit of saturation and a little bit of luminance. Then we start to pull out saturation of the greens and shift the color a little more towards the teal side. On the aquas, we're pulling up the hue a little bit and saturation down. And blues, we're pulling saturation and luminance down a little bit. This is really to preserve skies, which we don't have a lot of that here, but that's what it's for. And then we have a little adjustment to purples as well as to magentas on the hue side. So that's what's being done there. But really all I wanna do now is just adjust my temperature. So I need to look at this directly so I can see it. I'm gonna bring the, the tint up a little bit and then give the image just a little bit more warmth. Okay, not too much, but about right here. And that starts to look really, really nice. Now at any point, if you wanna get an idea of white balance, you still have your white balance selector tool that you can bring over any area of the image, press check, and it'll gain a white balance kind of, you know, reading off of any gray areas. So you just want it to be a neutral color tone. But you'll notice that it kind of did a similar shift to what I just did. It did a little shift to the tint, and it did a little shift to white balance. So it looks good right there. 
and that's really it. Um, for our effects, I have a little bit of texture reduction to kind of reduce some of the texture in the skin, clarity, dehaze, everything else is fine. If you want a little more vignette, you can pull a little more in. But honestly, I like the one that we did with our, our radial filter, so we're good. So this is it. At this point, I would just export the image. And I can do that by just going up to this little arrow icon and clicking export to camera roll. And now I have this image shot and edited in just a couple minutes directly from the phone. Now again, I wanna reiterate, I'm not saying to replace your dedicated setup. I'm saying to get out there and be creative with whatever you have. I'm saying to create no matter what. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to do more of these. For more bite-sized tutorials, you guys can follow me at Born and Creative on TikTok or at PyJersa on Instagram. And if you like this kind of setup, I'll bring more of these kind of short form tutorials to Adorama TV and we'll explain in full length how to get to final images, the entire concepts behind the shots and everything. In the meantime, I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.